Thank well, thank you for uh, letting me come and speak with you. Now, the title of today's talk is How Being an Entrepreneur is a Lot Like Infinitesimal Calculus. <laughs> now, it's an odd title, I know, and I promise you, don't fear, I'm not going to put any mathematical formula on the board, uh, but I, it is an odd title. Most of us in this room are an entrepreneur of one form or another. And if you're not aware or don't know or do know, uh, infin infinitesimal calculus is the study of the very small. Infinitesimal differences and their limits. That's what, that, that's what calculus is, basically. And why this subject? Why this topic? Well, I'm a high eye on the disc personality profile, so of course I'm going to have to answer that with a story. <laughs> Sometime last year I was speaking with this very famous and accomplished author, coach, mastermind guru, by the name of Dan Miller. And we were talking about the things that we like to read. And he was telling me, you know, what his latest reads were. He said, well, what do you like to read? I said, well, I like to read books on science, you know, mathematics, physics, quantum electrodynamics, that kind of stuff. And I will never forget the look on his face and what he said after I told him that. The look was a mixture of shock, amazement, disbelief, and maybe a little bit of horror, which was disturbing. <laughs> He goes, why? Why do you read books on science? Well, I, don't, I can't remember exactly what I told you that day, but I did think about it for a while. And several years ago, I went through a core values inventory and really honed down on, you know, what, what things do I value in my life and how have they popped up in my life and supported me when I celebrated them or diminished me when I diminished them. And here are my top six. Knowledge, you see, is number two. I like knowing things. I like knowing things. From the earliest age, I was taking things apart and putting them back, back together again. I wanted to know how they worked, how they were built. Curiosity is a big one. It's number six. I'm curious about how, I mean, good grief, look at me. I ended up in medicine. I wanted to know how people worked, how they were built, how they functioned, how the different systems are integrated and worked together. And then exploration. I do that when I read. I'm exploring unknown frontiers, at least frontiers unknown to me, until I read about them. And then I like teaching and sharing. Uh, some people say I share a little too much of what I know <laughs> on occasion. But all of these things together get at my number one core value, which is freedom. It allows me to feel free. Freedom's not just being able to come and go as you please. It's satisfying that inner need to attend to your core values. And so when I'm reading and I discover something new, it really excites me and I feel free. Now, why infinitesimal calculus? You know, how does that apply to being an entrepreneur? Well, like so many things I read in science, they have an application. I can see the application in everyday life and living. Now, the space we live in is called Euclidean, Euclidean geometry. That's the space in which we live. And it has some very odd characteristics. So let me show you one. Here are two lines, P and F. Now, they look like they're different lengths, right? In fact, they are. This one's about four or five inches long. This one's about 17 or 18 inches long. I didn't measure them, but that's approximation. And so you could come up here with a ruler and me measure them precisely and tell me the exact length of F and the exact length of, length of P. But when you look at it at its infinitesimal level, I will tell you something shocking something completely illogical. You won't believe it when you hear it. These two lines are the same length. And I can prove it. Now I told you I wasn't going to put a mathematical formula on the board, but I can illustrate it with a diagram. 
I'm going to draw one line here. And I'm going to draw one line here. And a lever. And let's put that lever on a little swivel so that I can move that lever back and forth. Are you starting to get the picture? I can move this lever back and forth. No matter where I put this lever, L, on line F, it's going to strike a different point on line P. From this end to that end. This line is as long as that line. Remember I told you the geometric space in which we live has some odd properties. You may say, well that's fine, these are little lines on a whiteboard. What about big distances? What about vast differences? Distances. Anybody recognize that? What is it? Big Dipper. Big Dipper. Big Dipper. Everybody recognizes Big Dipper. It's not actually a constellation. It's called an asterism, which is a recognizable formation of stars within a constellation. Isn't it odd how people, uh, their eyes are drawn to the most obvious thing while missing one of the third largest constellations in the sky? It belongs in Ursa Major, the Big Bear. But everybody recognizes it as the Big Dipper. And if you go outside in the morning around, well, before the sun comes up, and look north, you'll see the Big Dipper this time of the year at exactly the time. The reason that's good to know that is because if you look over about a Big Dipper length, you'll run into a star. Does anybody know what that is? It's the North Star, it's Polaris. And it's at the tail of the Little Dipper. With me so far? This distance is 310 light years. This star, which is Duby, and that's Merak, but the star Duby to Polaris is 310 light years. That means you have to travel at the speed of light from this location to that location to get there. 310 years. Now, a light year you travel almost six trillion miles. That's a big number. That's one trillion. So one followed by 12 zeros. Does anybody here know how long a trillion seconds is in years? I think I've shared this with the group once upon a time. A trillion seconds in years. Well, it's not 31 years. It's not 317 years. It's not 3,170 years. It's 31,709 years. You know, our government right now tosses the word trillion around like it was, you know, a small number. It's a huge number. In fact, if you were present when Christ was born and spent a million dollars a day for 2,000, 16 years, you've not yet spent one trillion. <laughs> you spent three quarters of a trillion. So it's a big, huge number. Six trillion miles, one light year. 310 light years from this star to that star. Now if you go outside and you look at Polaris and you slowly ga get, shift your gaze over to Duby, you've spanned that distance with your eye. Right? 310 light years, but your eye may have moved just a few millimeters. This line is as long as that line. Some very odd things happen when you make small changes here, though. What's the one variable that's missing from this geometric space? It's time. Small changes here. Big changes here. And they're amplified through the system. The more time that elapse, elapses, the more change that you see on line F. And we'll call that now future in this present. You know, as entrepreneurs, we struggle. We put our head down, we start working, we have a dream, we have a goal. We run up a on obstacles and roadblocks 
and we feel like some of these issues and problems are insurmountable, but we keep plugging away. We keep making small changes. A little success here, a little setback there. Another success here, maybe another success there. We're always kind of marching forward. We're pushing on this lever, trying to get an advantage. Good decisions here. The likelihood of a good outcome here is increased. If you want to live an extraordinary life, I'm convinced you have to make extraordinary decisions. And it begins here, not here. Nobody arrives at their destination the minute they start out. You know, we're all on a journey with an unknown destination, and we're going to arrive at some unknown time. You heard Jeremy Cowart earlier today say, I start these projects and I don't know where they're going or how they're going to end up. But look at what that man has been able to accomplish. We want to see the big thing. We want to see the big success. And when we do, it's a product of this. It started back here. So my message is if you're struggling, if you feel like you're not making enough headway, just know that that person you give those words of encouragement to, that little product you push out that somebody reads, that one sentence you said in a coaching, in a coaching session that somebody grabbed hold of, those are those small changes that makes the biggest impact later on. Now in 1977, I was standing in a radio shack and a man I barely knew by the name of Larry Cahill said to me, Clark, it tells me what your, your um, success with your company tells me is that you can do anything you want to do. And the next day I went into college, or enrolled in college, and that ultimately led to where I'm standing right now. If you look back at your own life, and you say, wow, that big thing, that big event that happened, if you keep going back, you will find there was one little pivot point that made the biggest difference. Now, some people push on this line with bad decisions, and I did for many years. And the outcome compounded over time until I came very close to losing my career. People who make great decisions here will have better outcomes. Some people travel down this lever without pushing on this lever. Uh, James Altucher in his book, Choose Yourself, said it's time traveling. People are so invested in a, in a future that they dream about, but they never do anything to get there. They don't do the work. They're hoping somebody else will provide that for them. So they're traveling down this lever, but they're not making any progress. The chance for meaningful outcome here is small. Then there are other people who actually go in the opposite direction. They're stuck in the past of some event. Something bad happened. They never move forward. They keep going back and revisiting rather than pushing on this bar and making change today. You know, life will keep presenting the same problem to you until it teaches you what you need to know. Right? It certainly has in my life. So, this is one instance where I saw and something I read that, hey, this has got application to being an entrepreneur. There's one big difference, though, in infinitesimal calculus and being an entrepreneur. Calculus is the study of limits. It's the study of limits. Theoretically, the entrepreneur has no limits. Theoretically. And if you do, where do they come from? Where do those limitations come from? Self-imposed. They're self-imposed. Now, the odds of you being here in this room with your genetic makeup, all your genes, all your alleles, just like they are, has been estimated to be one in 400 trillion. That's impossible. Yet here we all are. One in 400 trillion. That's a big number, remember? 
It's a huge number. I'm convinced that possibility and impossibility walk the same path. And the distance between them is infinitesimally, vanishingly small. And it has a name. I'm going to tell you what that name is. It's choice. It's choice. Jeremy Coward, when everybody else was saying, that's impossible, that thing you want to do. It's impossible to build that thing you want to build. It's impossible to create that thing you want to, to create. He stood up and said, it's not only possible, I'm going to do it. Walk with me. Let's get it done. Life without limits is a choice. As entrepreneurs, we should all embrace that notion. Don't be limited by what you feel you can't do. Celebrate what you can do. If there's something you don't know how to do, go out and figure out how to do it. Ask for help. Everyone in this room is dedicated not only to their business, but to the success of everybody else in this room. I'm convinced of it. So when somebody asks you for help, give it. Because you're making a small change here. I'm not so wise enough. None of you are so wise enough to know what's going to happen here. We make plans. We make goals. Grand plans, grandiose plans. Yet they change, don't they? They change with time. But I'm convinced if we serve the right purpose, we'll always end up where we're supposed to be. Thanks for letting me share. <laughs>